Welcome to Academic Guru's Tutoring Thursday, where we answer all of your high school, college, and university questions. If you would like your question to be featured on next week's Tutoring Thursday, please submit your questions to questions at academicgurusinc.com. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay current with all of our new videos. All right, so this is going to be the part three of our original common math mistakes video. So in this video, we'll talk about some of the common calculus mistakes. Um, I just finished grading a lot of calculus papers, and I figured that some students are really struggling with limits and derivatives. But in calculus, you'll be dealing with a lot of limits and derivatives for as long as you can imagine. So it's always good to avoid making these mistakes that I'm about to show you. So let's get to our first common mistake. So let's say you're given the following limit. So we have limit as x approaches negative 4 of x squared minus x minus 20 and then for our denominator we have x plus 4 alright so a lot of students try to plug in negative 4 for the denominator and they get 0 and they say that limit does not exist and they get the wrong answer so whenever we have a polynomial at the numerator we always have to kind of think about breaking it down okay because obviously there, there is there's got to be a limit somewhere here and if we just plug in negative four and say limit does not exist we're not going to get the right answer okay so here i need to look for two numbers that would multiply together and give me negative 20 and also they would Add to give they would kind of add to each other and give me negative one, okay. And the only numbers that I can think of are five and four. So let me open up my parentheses. So we have my x, all right, and then it's going to be x minus five, and then it's going to be x plus four, all over x plus 4 alright now we can actually divide stuff out okay so we have a x plus 4 at the numerator and then we have a x plus 4 at the denominator and these two cancel out so we are left with x minus 5 and all we have to do from here is to just plug in negative 4 for x so we're going to have negative 4 minus negative 5 so we're going to have negative 9 as our final answer our second common mistake is again related to limits um, this time our problem is slightly more complicated so we have limit as x approaches 7 of square root of x plus 2 minus 3 all over x minus 7 again we cannot simply plug in 7 because we're not going to get the right answer instead we have to work with our numerator and multiply it by its conjugate I'll explain what that means in a second so just remember whenever you have a square root in your limit you always have to multiply by its conjugate try to remember this because it's going to make your life way easier when you're dealing with limits that involve square roots um, a lot of students left this problem blank simply because they didn't know how to deal with this square root right there. So a conjugate simply means take whatever you have in your numerator and multiply it by its opposite. So here we have square root of x plus 2 minus 3. The conjugate is simply going to be square root of x plus 2. Instead of this minus sign, we're going to change it to plus. So it's going to be plus 3 okay we're going to do the same for our denominator so we're going to have x plus 2 plus 3 and that's basically what conjugate is so it's nothing too hard now we're going to have limit as x approaches 7 
So now we're going to combine everything together. So we have x plus 2 minus 3 times square root of x plus 2 plus 3 and then for our denominator we have x minus 7 times square root of x plus 2 plus 3 Alright, so now we need to start simplifying this a bit more. So for our numerator, if you look closely, we have difference of squares. So um, square root of x plus 2 times square root of x plus 2, they, they cancel out. So we're going to be left with um, just x plus 2. And negative 3 times positive 3, we're going to be left with negative 9 okay and for our denominator we can't do anything so we're just going to leave it as it is so it's going to be x minus 7 times square root of x plus 2 plus 3 all right so let's simplify this a bit more so we're going to have limit as x approaches 7 now we're going to have 2 minus 9, that's going to give us negative 7, so we're going to have x minus 7 all over x minus 7 again times square root of x plus 2 plus 3. And now x minus 7's cancel out, so we'll be left with 1 over square root of x plus 2 plus 3 now we can plug in our x so we have 7 7 plus 2 that's going to give us 9 and square root of 9 is simply going to be 3 so we'll be left with 3 plus 3 1 over 3 plus 3 and that's going to give us 1 over 6 for our final answer so make sure whenever you have a square root in your limits, again, you have to multiply it by its conjugate. So just keep that in mind. So our third common math mistake, as you might have guessed it, it's again related to limits. This time we're solving limits at infinity. So we have limit as x approaches infinity of 5x to the 8th power divided by 7x to the 9th power minus 20x plus 4. So um, I think I graded about 8 papers where students wrote 1 as the final answer. I don't know how they ended up with that answer, but I'm going to teach you guys a little shortcut or like a trick that will help you when dealing with limits at infinity. So here's the shortcut. Whenever the degree of your numerator is smaller than the degree of your denominator, your limit is always going to be zero. Okay, so just a little shortcut for you guys to remember so you don't have to do all the calculations and stuff. So hopefully it will help you guys. For our fourth common mistake, we're going to talk about derivatives. Um, this is an area that a lot of people struggle with, so I think like about 56 papers I graded, I found out that about 31 students were still struggling with derivatives, so I thought it would be good if we go over some examples here. <clears throat> so first of all, we have the definition of derivative, which says um, f prime of x equals to limit as h approaches 0 of f times x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now let's try to use this formula to find a derivative. So for example, let's say we have um, f of x equals x squared plus 3x minus 2. 
All right, let's plug this in into our formula. So we're going to have f prime of x equals to limit as h approaches 0. So we're going to have x plus h squared plus 3 times x plus h minus 2 and then minus we have x squared plus 3x plus minus 2 so a lot of people mess up this problem because of this minus sign right here um, the minus sign needs to be distributed to every term inside the parentheses. Okay, literally, in all of the papers I graded, many students didn't distribute this correctly. So always remember to distribute your negative. So if you distribute this correctly, you're going to get negative x squared minus 3x, and then negative times a negative becomes a positive, so we're going to have plus 2. So this is the correct way to actually, you know, go over this problem and solve it. Our fifth common mistake is when we are dealing with slightly complicated derivatives. So we have y equals tangent times sine times square root of x squared plus 8x all raised to the power of 5. So it seems like we have to use the chain rule for this one. Um, a lot of students to use the chain rule correctly and set up the problem perfectly. However, because we have a lot of stuff going on here, they don't follow a correct order. So they might start from parentheses and work their way out, and that's fundamentally wrong. Remember, you always have to start from your first term and work your way out. Um, otherwise, you're going to get the wrong answer. Also, in situations like this, where your derivative is going to be significantly long, don't start simplifying. You know, leave the problem as it is. Now, I don't mean not to simplify at all. If you can do some easy simplifications, then by all means go ahead and simplify. But if you're not sure about what to simplify, don't even try it. So, with all that said, let's get to the problem. So, we're going to use the chain rule here, so we'll get y prime equals, we'll take this 5 to the front, so we're going to have 5 times tangent times sine times, I'm going to, I'm going to write my square root as x squared plus 8x raised to the power of 1 over 2 and then we have this whole thing, we're going to drop the power by 1, so we're going to get 4. Alright, now I'm going, to use, I'm going to multiply this by the derivative of whatever I have inside, so it's going to be d dx, so we're going to have tangent, I'm pretty sure we're going to run out of space here, but we'll see, times sine times x squared plus 8x raised to the power of 1 over 2 and we barely made it there we go so now we're gonna have 5 times tangent times sine times x squared plus 8x all raised to the power of 1 over 2 that's going to be times derivative of tangent is simply going to be secant squared so we're going to have secant squared times sine times x squared plus 8x all raised to the power of 1 over 2 now derivative of sine is simply going to be cosine so it's going to be times cosine times x squared plus 8x all raised to the power of 1 over 2 and that's going to be times, we're going to take this 1 over 2 to the front, so we're going to have 1 over 2 times x squared plus 8x 
and then we're going to subtract this by 1 so we're going to get negative 1 over 2 times derivative of x squared is simply going to be 2x and derivative of 8x is simply going to be 8 so there we go this is a slightly more complicated derivative it is also pretty long so make sure you take your derivatives in order now for this problem I'm not going to simplify anything because then it would get really complicated um, a lot of students try to simplify their answers when they're taking long derivatives and they make a mistake somewhere when they're simplifying so I would just say if you don't see anything that would get simplified just leave your answer as it is. Um, so there you have it for this video. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel to stay current with our upcoming videos. Thank you. Thank you for tuning into our Tutoring Thursday channel. If you enjoyed watching this video and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. We would love to hear from you. Until next week's Tutoring Thursday, happy studying.